Welcome back to Core TV Live. I'm Joy Limnacker and with a look at your legal brief, the Alabama fugitive captured earlier this week with his corrections officer girlfriend is now back in Alabama and brand new video shows Casey and Vicki White being apprehended. Take a look now at this dash cam video released by the Evansville, Indiana Police Department showing part of the chase that ended in a crash. It shows officers pulling accused murderer 36 year old Casey White out of the car and handcuffing him. It also shows first responders pulling 58 year old Vicki White from the vehicle and rendering first aid to her after she is believed to have shot herself in the head, ultimately passing away a few hours later. Now, authorities also release these brand new images of items they confiscated from the getaway vehicle, including camping and survival gear and a barrage of weapons, among them an AR-15. Casey White is now in an Alabama state prison after 11 days on the run. He waived his extradition hearing, going back to Alabama voluntarily, and he was arraigned late last night at the Lauderdale County Jail, which is where he initially escaped with the help of Vicki. An autopsy is now being conducted to determine exactly how Vicki died and whether she did actually die from a self-inflicted gunshot wound, Julie. All right, Joy Limnacrin in the studio with that story. So sad. Uh, we'll await the autopsy findings, I suppose, yeah. and see where things go next. Thank you for all of that. Let me bring in now my guests. I have with me former assistant state attorney, civil rights attorney, and criminal defense attorney, Sue Ann Robinson. She's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and in Nashville, Tennessee, retired police sergeant Melissa Pinkleton. Wow, um, this case is, is really something uh, so peculiar. It's hard to know what, what in the world the relationship was, how something like this happens. Um, Sue Ann, tell me, what questions do you have in your mind um, as we learn more details about this case, please? I definitely have questions about their interaction in the facility, but I have questions about his past attempts for escapes because it's my understanding that he's tried to escape in the past and he's done so by kind of winning the trust of corrections officers. So I would like to hear from them what happened in those instances to try to put together how he could have you know, kind of connected with this corrections officer and gotten to this point. I also want to hear more information about the medical autopsy and what happened with respect to the self-inflicted, what's being called a self-inflicted gunshot wound, because it just seems so bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre, but then certainly her to um, shoot herself during the conduct of this escape seems so unlikely and so I'm very interested to see what the autopsy says and how that relates to how you know the alleged shooting occurred. Right I, I'm very interested to see that as well Sue Ann. I would not be surprised if the medical examiner finds that this was a homicide. Sergeant Melissa Pinkleton give us your thoughts and of course you're speaking from the perspective of someone who served in law enforcement. Uh, what stands out to you with this one please? I can't relate in the fashion of someone who served in law enforcement to this because it just, it's, to me, it's ridiculous. She is a corrections officer. She should not be having any kind of a personal, interpersonal relationship with, with this inmate. And I think that with the autopsy, I'm curious to find out how they rule it as well, because it makes sense to me that she would shoot herself because I think it was an all or nothing thing. They were either gonna go and go all in, that's why they had the weapons, that's why they, she, I don't know if you had reported this or not, but she had sold her house from my understanding and had a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. I was not aware that he had made a previous escape attempt. That is something that I didn't know, but it doesn't make sense to me that she would throw her entire life away and run away with him. But it, it does make sense that they knew they were gonna get caught and she was like, I'm not going to jail where he's going because she's been a corrections officer and she knows what jail is like. And it's not a good place. It's horrible. No, yeah, no, nobody wants to head there. Uh, we have some video and just want to give everyone at home a warning. Uh, you may find this very disturbing. Uh, well, this is dash camera video. Uh, these are the moments in which uh, first responders are trying to save her uh, in the car after she has allegedly shot herself. We'll see what the autopsy findings tell us, but um, there you can see various sets of hands uh, in that car working on her, trying uh, to help her. You saw a weapon 
grabbed there. Um, Sergeant Pinkleton, just playing devil's advocate with the analysis here, um, would it surprise you if, and who knows, we don't know what the circumstances are, but is it possible for a, a criminal, uh, we know this guy is one, I mean, is it possible to uh, have a situation where he may be having her hand holding that gun, but his hands over top of it, making it appear to be that she shot herself, uh, but in fact it was him? It could be possible. Uh, it just depends on the time frame. If they were mm -hmm. actively pursuing them, he's not going to have time to do that and while they're, while they're driving. It could be possible, but I don't think it's likely in this scenario at all because they were in the middle of fleeing. Really good point. If they're in motion, would make it less likely. Yeah, I'll be so curious to see what the findings reveal. Melissa, you're going to stay with us. Sue Ann Robinson, thank you for being with us here on Court TV Live. We'll be right back.